Many people think investing is either complicated or just for the wealthy, and that would have been the case if this was said a hundred years ago. But today, investing is accessible to everyone. Hi, my name is Namdi, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the basics of investing. The first thing you need to understand about investing is what the stock market is. To explain the stock market, imagine a mall filled with stores, hundreds of stores, stores that sell clothes, stores that sell watches, jewelry, food, you name it, whatever it is, there is a store that sell in this mall. That shopping mall can be likened to the stock market and those stores can be likened to companies, your Google, your Apple, your Amazon of this world are all stores inside the mall, which is the stock market. Then when you buy a piece of any shop or store that is in that mall, you own a piece of that store. If the store does well, you make money. If the store doesn't do well, you lose money. In essence, that's what the stock market is all about. The stock market is that mall that contains all the stores which are companies that you're familiar with. Using this same analogy of the stores and more, we are also going to be explaining what bonds, mutual funds and index funds are. And I'm sure you've heard of these words being thrown around either in the news or your friends saying it. But at the end of this video, I promise you, you're going to get the gist. So what are bonds? Think of bonds as a loan that you give to a store. This store could either be a company or the government, whichever it is, you loan money to this store in exchange for an interest after a certain time. So what about mutual funds? These are like personal shoppers. You come into the mall, you're not sure which store to go to buy this or to buy that. Then comes in the personal shopper. This personal shopper understands the layout of the mall. This personal shopper have been doing this for donkey years. They know the shortcuts, they know everything. And then this personal shopper, you tell the personal shopper what you want and the personal shopper helps you to go to the right store to buy from that store, of course, at a fee. Now, these personal shoppers are called fund managers and every mutual fund is managed by a fund manager. This fund manager has a fee attached to it that makes it expensive. But at the end of the day, what this fund manager does, it helps you pick right stocks that you want and invest for you, of course, at a fee. Lastly, what about index funds? What are they? Index funds and mutual funds are very similar. The main difference between both of them is while mutual funds have a personal shopper, remember our analogy, right? Index funds have no personal shopper attached to them. Index funds are based off of an index. So let's say, for example, there, there has, this mall is divided into sections. So each section has a group of stores based on the characteristics of that section. Index funds can be likened to that section. Section A has 10 stores. Two stores sell shoes, one sell bags, and all of that. When you want to buy from an index fund, you just buy that section. You buy the whole section with whatever comes in it. And you don't pick or choose the makeup of the stores in that section. All your focus would be on buying that section. That's the difference between an index fund and a mutual fund. And because this is done automatically, because you buy directly, you buy a certain section, you're not picking and choosing, you're not paying anyone. Index funds are passive and while mutual funds are active, remember, active because there is a fund manager that practically picks the, the, the stocks, passive because there is no fund manager. All you need to know is how many sections, what section am I interested in and then you buy. An example of index funds today is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the 500 biggest companies in the United States. And that's a big example of an index fund. I'm not choosing the companies that make up the S&P 500. They have a predetermined criteria 
that allows companies to either qualify to enter that group or to be taken out of that group. And all I need to do is I want to buy the S&P 500 and I buy that fund and whatever comes within that fund, I'm buying into that already. Another example of index fund is the FTSE 100 and that's the UK version of the S&P 500. While the S&P 500 is US based companies, the FTSE 100 is made up of UK companies, the top 100 companies in the UK and this index are passively run. So we've explained what the stock market is. We know what bonds are, we know what mutual funds and index funds are, but what exactly is investing? You could see investing as planting seeds in the ground. These seeds are planted with the aim that it's going to grow and either produce a fruit if it's a fruit bearing plant or produce a flower or whatever, but you expect a seed that is planted in the soil at the back of your garden to grow. Investing is just that. With investing, you're putting your money in a company in the stock market or in an index fund that is a part of the stock market with the aim that these funds will grow in the future. And why, and why is it important that we even do this at all? Why is investing such a big deal? Outside the fact that you're making more money, think of investing as a way to safeguard your, your funds. You must have heard of the cost of living crisis, right? If you're in the UK, that's all we heard about for the past two years. But what exactly is the cost of living crisis? The cost of living crisis just simply means that things today are more expensive than they were two years, three years ago. And the what causes that is actually called inflation. And that is the major reason why we invest. If you don't invest, you take your money and you put it under your pillow for two years, for three years, what you could buy with that sum of money is going to be reduced in two years time. So what do I mean by that? Let's say I have a thousand pounds and I put that under my pillow. I keep it in a box or I bury it in my garden, right? In two years time, if today I could buy an iPhone, for example, with that thousand pounds, pounds in two years time i won't be able to buy an iphone with thousand pounds i might need a thousand to a thousand three hundred pounds to buy the same iphone right what has taken place there what has happened there is called inflation and investing is the only way you can give your hard hand money a fighting chance this is the essence of investing you're giving your funds the opportunity to grow to grow faster than inflation would grow investing also helps you achieve your goals you want to buy a house in a couple of years or you're planning for retirement these are big goals you can't save your way to achieving these goals especially if they are not in the short term any goal that you want to achieve that is going to be after five years trust me you need to invest your funds because that is the only way you can achieve that goal you can grow your money quick enough in order to achieve your goals one of the greatest investors of our time if not the greatest warren buffett his strategy for investing is to go the long run anyone that have read his story would know that he became one of the richest men after his 60th birthday like he has been investing for years and years and afterwards he became the richest man and that's what time in with investing can do for you and that should be our strategy for investing we should allow time work for us not against us we should use time in our favor and look at investing from a long-term perspective we are going to go back to the analogy we used before we do have a thousand pounds. We want to invest a thousand pounds. And we've identified a store or a section, index fund, right? Or maybe we found a very good personal shopper that's going to help us invest. And then we invest our thousand pounds into the stores. For example, Apple, Google, Facebook, we invest our money. What that means is we become a part owner. And what that also means is our fortunes are tied with the fortunes of the company. So if the company does well, our money appreciates, the value of the company appreciates. And when the value of the company appreciates, a lot more people are willing to pay more in order to buy into that company. And when they are willing to pay more to buy into that company, 
at the value of what we've invested in automatically jumps up. So what do I mean? I invest a thousand pounds into Apple and in two years time, Apple have done so well. They've released a bunch of products and a lot of people have really value Apple. And then people don't want to buy Apple for a thousand pounds again. There are people rushing to buy Apple for two thousand pounds per stock. What does that mean? That means that the value of my stock has grown from a thousand pounds to two thousand pounds. If I end up selling my stocks or shares in Apple at that time, I would have gained hundred percent of my funds. That is how your money grows when investing. But there is more. Not all stores operate the same way in the stock market. Some companies might decide that I'm going to reward you for investing in us for trusting us with your money for supporting our business and every year i'm going to give you a part of our profits that's what we call dividends there are companies that give out dividends on a yearly basis or quarterly as the case may be based on how much profit they've made during that period lastly to tie all this concept together is the concept of compound interest this is what makes investing a sweet deal so what exactly is compound interest think of compound interest as a way of investing your end interest to earn more interest so let's say you invest a thousand pounds and then it grows by five percent in a year making you a thousand fifty and then the next year you earn another five percent not just on the thousand pounds this time around but on the 1050 so a thousand and the initial 50 pounds that you've earned and you earn a five percent on that and then it keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying that is compound interest and as albert says it's the eighth wonder of the world i mentioned earlier that what Aaron buffett's strategy is to invest for the long run and there is a reason why we need to copy that strategy and the reason is very simple the stock market is very volatile. And what does that mean? That means that the stock market changes a lot. Today you're making a lot of money and tomorrow you're losing money for no reason that's in your control. But that is the nature of the stock market. If you're going to be investing in the stock market, you need to accept that. The nature of the stock market is it's very volatile. It's up today and it's down tomorrow. But an investor understands this and invests for the long run because in the long run, even though it moves up and down, it goes up, it creeps up. If you're looking at the horizon of just one week, just one month, it might look very bad or very good. But in 10 years, history has shown that the stock markets keep climbing up and that's why you need time on your side. You don't want to look at what's happening in the stock market today. Things can happen, but over the long run, it is meant to grow. Quickly, let's debunk some common myths with investing. One, investing is for, for the rich or wealthy. That's not true. It's just like saying cooking is for a professional cook. No, no, no. Investing is for everyone. Another myth we want to quickly squash is investing is gambling. Investing is not gambling. Maybe trading is, but investing is not gardening. Investing is you picking the right company and this is you investing for, for the long term. I hope now you understand the basics of investing. If you found this video useful, you would also like the second part to this video, which is going to be taking you step by step on how you're going to make your first investment. Please like and subscribe so others will find this video and it's going to change their life. Thank you. See you next time.